Okay, every year, uh, I, it used to be this column was uh, 20 underground death metal albums or black metal albums or all that. And I really focused on underground releases and things that you just never heard of. And over the, there's been such a blur of the line between what is underground and what is not. There's also a lot of really difficult accessibility now for the real underground stuff. And uh, not everything is on Bandcamp, and it's harder to sort of give people access to a lot of the music that's out there. So a lot of excuses for the fact that this is just 10 death metal albums. And I'm not really focused on underground or whatever. It's more, this is uh, underrated stuff. It's... Uh, stuff you probably missed and stuff that I didn't get around to reviewing throughout the year. And a lot, some of it will be from the end of the year. Some of it will be from the start. It's just a, a matter of curating 10 releases that are uh, interesting enough to, to maybe catch your ear while you're looking for more at the end of the year. If you didn't find what you wanted, there's going to be a bunch of these lists and we can cut through them to just see what you might like. So, uh, the first one up is one that I think a lot of people actually missed. Even though it was on Stygian Black Hand and Goat Throne, most people who know anything about death metal or black metal or heavy metal know these labels for the most part. Uh, it, but you might have missed this release in July. And I, I'm not sure how I missed it. I, I knew of this band, but uh, I didn't know they were related to Noroth and Reburied. I think both or at least one of those bands put out uh, their own records this year, and that was probably more of a focus for them. Uh, this is what I would call a cult death metal, and that means there is maybe a little bit of a black metal atmosphere. There's a little bit of a, an aggressive side to it that is a little bit aimed towards maybe early 90s black death a little bit. But generally, this is a, a pretty short death metal record and one that focuses on riffs and a harried attack. It's very much a... Uh, an organic death metal record that it was hard for me to find something to say about it because these songs they're not brutal like they, they sort of hang out a little bit they, they don't really cut to it and but they're only two or three minutes long so, so they blur together in a way where it's it's more of a full album listen than just grab a song because any one given song kind of gets its sort of thrashing side out but it never really uh, like commands that it, it finds any difference between the last tracks. So it's not that they're all samey, but they bleed together in a, in, in a strange way. So I can see why people had trouble connecting with it. Uh, but I think that's, it's a cool album art. It's a, a pretty cool band. And I, I hope they continue with it because uh, this was much better than I, I would have, uh, you know, I would have been more excited about it if I'd heard about it at the, uh, in, in the summer. Finitude is the latest full-length album from a uh, melodic black death metal band, and I would have put this in the black metal list, but it it fits in with technical death metal much more. This is a, this band is on the artisan era, more of a progressive or technical death metal label, and one that is decidedly modern. I think if you're a fan of groups, of the evolution of groups like Arsis and the Black Dahlia Murder, you'll understand that this is a little bit on that side of things. Uh, the same way, like a band like Zoth is, there's a certain uh, United states uh, zeitgeist where uh, technicality and uh, uh, blurring the lines between black death metal uh, created its own sort of beast and that's kind of what this is but this is a swiss band who have a, a, an interest in swedish melodic black death metal to start and again they became kind of a technical death metal band and so that fusion is pretty exciting it's, it's pretty cool uh, they've gotten better at it their last record was pretty much right on the mark i found i reviewed that record in full and you can go check that out but this doesn't really change that much about it i think that they've always been great at curating good artwork they've always been great in the production value realm and uh i just wasn't sent this for review even though i'm a big fan of the label and all that and so i i picked it up and i was impressed so i thought i'd mention it So, of, of course, 
you would think that most people know who, who Sulfur Aeon are. This is a German quintet, and the main guy behind it has, has really made a, a big deal out of this band over a long period of time. But they they're really aren't that well known or celebrated here in the States as much as they are in Europe. And this record is uh, very much in line with what a lot of uh, German bands are doing, and that's uh, fusing a lot of ideas from uh, Gothic rock and uh, gothic metal into their extreme metal sounds and i think that really works for some bands i don't think that it really works very well for this band but uh the way i i've been following them since their first seven inch i i own all of the records but i didn't buy this one right away because it sounded strange um it had uh, the songs that i'd heard had members of chapel of disease or secrets of the moon depending on the song uh either producing or co-songwriting and it made for a very different result and uh i think it this type of thing works for a band like ruins of beverast who are in, innately atmospheric and able to layer in a lot of sounds so that they mesh and with Sulphur Aeon, I think most listeners are expecting something more vibrant and aggressive. And this uh, this felt like a little bit of a, a strange idea at first that slowly won me over. And I think probably a lot of people had a similar response. This is just not as heavy or as interesting as some of their other records, uh, which sort of, they were popular when, uh, I think... Uh, behemoth had sort of changed their sound and a lot of people really keyed into this sound uh, off the back of that so i don't know check this out i thought it was a great record once i gave it a chance a from a century from the distant Agonal Hymns is the uh, is it the, it's the debut LP from Nithing, and this is from musician, primarily drummer uh, Matt Kilner, who you might recognize from Gorgasm and Vitriol. I, I think he more recently joined Vitriol. He'll I think he played on their most recent record that's coming out in a couple of months, and this is. Uh, extreme brutal death metal this is uh ab above uh, above the grade and over the top brutal death metal from a fantastic drummer and i think i missed this because it came out the same day as trichomoniasis and i was more focused on that record because it was just kind of a uh, more of a like a brodekin kind of thing and this is something different uh this isn't exactly deeds of flesh circa you know 2005 but it's still a pretty great record and uh insanely brutal I, I don't know what else there's nothing else to say about it is the drumming is just insane and, and like go experience it for yourself Death Cult Resurrection is the debut full-length album from Anharat. You'll remember they had a tape uh, just a couple years ago. Uh, this is a, was a originally a solo project from the guy behind Yith, uh, which is a funeral death through metal band from what I remember, and now he's added the drummer from Caged. Uh, check out caged i think they had a record out on translation lost this year if it's the same band and that's like a, a death metal hardcore kind of thing i could be wrong maybe a sludge something in there i didn't obviously i didn't pick up the record enough to know but i did spend a lot of time with this one uh, this is something I've compared to Rune Magic and Mortiferum, is there's an old school death to metal feeling, but they've given it some extra texture and ideas. There's something a little bit, uh, we, we know that this guy is great at atmosphere and that there's a fun funereal atmosphere in his blood in a sense. And this record makes good use of that while focusing on riffs and, uh, I would say kind of straightforward at death to metal of the early nineties ilk. There isn't uh, quite full-on doom metal riffs in there, but something closer to uh, maybe Durkata or something like that at times. So worth checking out. I thought it was great. Uh, very atmospheric and patient and uh, just uh, captivating for me because I love this style. A 
Abuse of a Corpse is the second full-length album from Anthropophagus. And this is a, a Massachusetts-based death metal band who've added some members for this release, and they've improved the quality of their production values. This doesn't sound so much like it was recorded in a garage. And that's that's not a great thing for me. I really liked how rusty and fucked up the first record was. It was just this insane, uh, like fresh out of the garbage can kind of death metal record and this is something a little bit more uh cleaned up uh, a little bit more ready to sell you know and i think that's good for them in terms of uh, getting their stuff out there but uh they're kind of like i think they're going to be touring with topagus pretty soon it's a good fit because they both play weird but traditional death metal and in this case they're kind of punkish. They're, there's like a little bit of repulsion in the way that they see things, but uh, it's still old school death metal that has got some thrash in its blood too. So uh, I, I, I liked the evolution of this, but it took me a little bit longer to really to really get into it than their first record, which was just a, an instant hit with me. <laughs> Abominaciones is the uh, it's the de debut full length album from Magic Mentor. This is a very new band from Mexico who uh, play kind of a it's it's a semi progressive influenced style of old school death metal. It's it's hard to really get uh, like a, a lock on exactly what this is because it's not perfectly recorded it's not uh virtuosic in its playing but you can tell that this is already an ambitious undertaking and i think they need a couple more times at it to really reach the level that they want to get to but this is a fantastic start you can see that they've uh the artwork reflects the amount of work they've kind of put into it i think it really represents well this ornate uh haunted scene and that's kind of what this comes up with it's uh there's some groovier Florida death metal influenced parts, but there's also some kind of thrashing death metal parts to this too. It all feels uh, pretty authentically old school, and I think it's a great start for this band. I really hope they put out more records. Ceremonial Blood Worship is uh, it's a, a pretty short record. They call it war metal. Call it I call, I'd call it bestial death metal or just late '80s death metal, and uh, there is some thrash in there. Uh, this is just uh, folks who love old school metal. They're just all about that. They're from Italy, and uh, these are simple songs. They didn't overthink them. They just s smashed them out, and they it actually ended up being a great record. I wouldn't overthink it. Hit play on it, let it do its thing, and uh, for me it was a good result. Now, Overwrought uh, from Nerectomy, uh, New York city based uh technical brutal death metal band is kind of the opposite of the last uh the last band they've completely overthought every second of this record because it is uh very long in the making and very uh very much a technical brutal death metal album that has picked up and learned over the years you know that they, they've really honed in on where technical death metal was uh 10 years ago or more than 10 years ago and then brought it back in uh to what's going on now so They've indicated, you know, there's some parts that sound like Psyopus with the tapping and all that. And then there's uh, Beneath the Massacre was an earlier kind of, uh, not deathcore, but brutal death, technical deathcore adjacent band early on with that first EP. And you get some hints of that on this record. But obviously they're influenced by Origin. They have John Longstreth on uh, playing on the record and uh, his playing really sells it uh, there, it's hard to do anything new in this style so they just do a lot and I think by doing a lot they've impressed me that's that's basically it <laughs> my 
Bog Snipe. Bogside Sniper Squadron is a, a a band, a side project from one of the fellows from Devil Master and Spitter or Spider, however you'd say that. And uh, they they sound like Argus Lent. That's basically just it. Uh, but they focus on a different uh, a different lyrical theme that has to do with uh, uh, Ireland. And uh, basically, this is just a great melodic death metal EP. If you're a fan of uh, Sacrifix. I think this this is melodic in a similar way, uh, and I think it's uh, a little bit more simple than what Argus Lent are doing now, uh, but no less effective. And uh, it's a just a, a great uh, demo tape overall. And uh, I've heard they played shows, so I'm hoping that there's going to be some more serious material that shows up uh, down the line. 